here we are, October 2018, and this is our layout update for you. So what have we been up to this month? So um, in this video, I'm gonna show you a budget loco. So we go back to basics with an old Hornby uh, loco uh, with the rubber tires that shows you how old it is. Um, so I think it's where the market back in the day when Triang were pretty much the, the top spec and then Hornby came in with their locos and as that transition went on, then Hornby got better and better as it went on. And then you start hitting Backman and then you start hitting Helge and all that. So if you go back to that top end of the Hornby days, before Hornby now excelled to where they are now, that they become the back end of the market. Um, so um, pushing aside the Triang, there is still a lot of these top end Hornby models back in the time um, that are really actually really good. And this is something I'm gonna feature for you in this video. The other news coming up uh, about the Great Model Railway Challenge. Um, so anybody watching that on channel five, you can now catch up on my five and I shall leave a link underneath. So if you're overseas, you can do a catch up and watch all the series while it's still on. Um, it, don't forget our team, the Shunter Guys, is coming up on the 2nd of November. So do keep tuned and uh, you'll start seeing adverts for us guys. I don't know how that looks, but um, it's really exciting and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. So there's also gonna be a lot of videos coming out once we appear on TV. Uh, I've got my build that's here that you can't see, uh, complete scratch build, uh, it's quite big. It's about that big. Um, it's the biggest scratch build I've ever done. It's two foot long, so give you an idea, and probably about uh, 18 inches high, so it's massive. Um, so I have to hide it at the side there. So you'll see a video on that, but obviously that'll be after the show, and you'll see all the other guys will bring videos out as well. So do keep posted and we'll share the same videos uh, to make sure we get maximum exposure of the Team Chunter guys. So that's all coming up, very exciting stuff. So a little news update for you, and this one is about the BRM magazine. So um, last week, I was lucky enough to be part of the Facebook Q&A session, and it was Howard taking the uh, questions. Uh, my question to Howard was, um, when any of us guys, you guys get a feature in a magazine, a picture or any article, it really gives us uh, a big buzz, uh, it gives us a lot more confidence, uh, and it actually spreads the word about, A, this fantastic community, and this brilliant hobby that we really love, uh, we excel in. Um, so my question was about the younger generation. It'd be really nice to see them have their projects in the magazine and trying to get them engaging more with this fantastic hobby. Um, Howard agreed with me and he said it's something that they've thought about, but again, it's about getting the content coming in in the first place to actually produce the articles. So really this is my shout out to anybody out there that has anyone 13 and younger, whoever, um, try and get their projects in a magazine uh, and in turn you'll get some goodies from the B BRM cupboard as well I believe so um, so certainly worth giving it a go all you need to do is send five or six pictures and about 200 words roughly about your project and what it's all about a description and whether it be a, a layout or scratch build whatever so it'd be really interesting to see this so um, get your projects in and uh, hopefully we'll catch you in one of the next issues of BRM So of course, we went to the Great Electric Train Show in Milton Keynes and it was a fabulous day.
course, whilst I was there, I was uh, lucky enough to take part in operating the Vale of Oxbury. So I have a massive thank you to Carl and uh, Nick, Nick Moon, for your help um, and letting me uh, take control. Um, I, you, how you guys put up with me for the day, I really don't know. I think I was only for there for about three hours in the end because I was sort of flitted off to do other things. But I really had a great day and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I met so many people and um, I was trying to operate a layout and then people were talking to me and then suddenly I was shooting off. Um, and I didn't realise that um, it takes, they take five people to run the Vale of Oxbury and it's an amazing layout if you haven't seen it. I'm sure you have, it's been in lots of magazines. And um, I can now understand why it takes five people to run it. Uh, we were down to four, I think when I was flitting off, they were down to three, bless them. So, um, sorry guys, but um, I tried to help where I could, and, but I had a really good day. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I didn't realise how hard it is to run a layout. Um, so, do give them guys credit when you go to an exhibition. I know we only look at the theatre at the front, but the guys behind it are doing all the running, and uh, I think we forget that sometimes. So, uh, credit where credit's due. Um, I, I was in awe about the amount of people that I bumped into there was between 20 30 people um, I really lost count it was I just kept seeing people people coming up to me um, it was so endearing I met with Susanna and Dave uh, Rails Dave uh, as we call him and uh, Dave from Tinsley and his lovely wife uh, Joy um, I met with Marcus uh, his layout and uh, amazing layout and uh, who else did I met? I met Alan from Dragon Junction, Graham Forston, um, and uh, John Warner. Uh, there was a few more people, lots more names, and I really can't think of all their names. Um, there was lots more. Uh, Peter, I bumped into a Peter, uh, and there was a Terry. I remember a Terry, but <laughs> anyway. So um, after saying goodbye to a lot of people, I went back into the showroom, um, had a little look round for the last time. And I just wanted to see what was left on the stalls. And uh, this was half hour before close on a Sunday. So everybody had their rich pickings of what was left. Anyway, so cut to the chase. I was looking for a donor loco, something old, a project that would I could revamp or get into the state to use on my layout. Um, I don't really like some of the older locos or the rubber pickups or that kind of thing because they just don't run as well. So I was having a look round and this, I actually found a loco. I walked away and came back and it was still sitting there. Um, and it was this little baby. Um, as you can see, I'll show you the box first. Box was a little bit tatty, uh, but it's the original box, absolutely original box. So this has probably done its time, however it is. And it's still got the glazing in just. Um, originally it was marked up for 36 pound, but I paid 25 for this. Um, now, I could have got it cheaper. I could have had a little barter and all the rest of it, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get it the price that it was on the table, just to show that um, we don't, some of us don't have the confidence to haggle or, you know, things like that. Uh, so it's good to sort of just sort of see something and work out what we're getting and is it good for money and does it work? And that's really what I've come to today. Now I found this, I found the old, uh, the old Western. Um, she is absolutely beautiful. Um, I was looking at Backman ones. Uh, I was thinking it was about 130 quid, I think, or the Dapol ones. There was I've been looking at loads. Um, yes, that's it is that price for a loco. But what about those people who can't afford a loco or haven't got that kind of money? They want a great day out an exhibition. I'm going to come away with something, and want some sort of memory and a good little runner. So this is where I've gone with this. Um, I paid 25 pounds for this loco. Uh, in the box uh, and she is pristine okay now I didn't actually get it out when I was looking there I just had a look at under you know and I could see it was immaculate and all the rest um, I had a look at the back so but I didn't pull everything out um, and everything's there the glazing's clean uh, the loco's clean um, there wasn't much dust on it so it's been on a shelf it's been tucked away somewhere and there is a lot of these things out there we really just have to look the wheels are immaculate um, they doesn't even look like it's really had a good run in. I've had it running for about an hour around the track here. Um, obviously, I've now DCC decoded it. Um, so yes, it's uh, and the tyres are in, in pristine. So I was really in awe when I found this. Um, yes, it's certainly an old oak common um, featured engine and it would look really nice on my layout. But I was looking at detail. So let's have a look at the loco a little bit closer up. 
Uh, as you can see, the front there, you've got the windscreen wipers and um, you've got this lovely little grab rail on the front there. And that's a little bit of wire, as you can see. That's the windscreen wipers. You could do with some proper black ones. And again, that could be added, um, something to be added at a later stage. But it just shows that they've added some sort of detail and it's uh, interesting to see. And then comparing the age of this model. Um, and so you've got a lovely, nice, clear numbers at the front, nice and fine type. And the recess where it's actually sitting is not too deep, so it's actually a, a nice feature instead of being too harsh like some of them are. So it's not too bad, it's got all the transfers on and all the rest. Um, the only thing that I can fault it with is the glazing. Um, the number details are really clear. You can see what I mean by the window, it is slightly askew just there. Um, that is the only thing that is really lets the model down, but that's uh, from fabrication in the factory. It's not actually the model itself. So back in the day before China really got big on, on Hornby's uh, mass production, um, the glazing would have been would have suffered and it's, this is obviously not the best one, but um, that could be corrected. A bit of paint on it or the glazing could be gently eased off and recorrected. So that's something I could revisit on. But performance is the key. Now I stuck it on a DC bit of track and she just purred along. Uh, the engine is pristine again. So I then thought, right, well, I'm going to DCC this, get this on the layout, and this is how I go. So let's have a look inside the loco. So let's remove the body and quickly show you what was offending. Here you can see the left arm of the brush plate and the right arm of the brush plate. And you can see these two screws actually go through, touching the plate and then going straight through to the chassis which makes contact all the way through. So these two screws now need to be isolated with a bit of heat shrink. Now, as you can see here, I've run some heat sink around the screw, as I showed you in the picture, and I've actually put a little washer behind this one, which is plastic card. Again, just to pack it out and to make sure this is completely isolated from contact from this arm to the chassis because the screw holds the two in place. If you've got any contact between, if that plate there and that screw are touching, once you hold that into the chassis behind because it's all metal, you'll get one complete circuit and it'll actually blow your decoder. So you really have to make sure with these motors uh, that you, with the screws in, you isolate the, uh, the contact between the actual screw and uh, nipping the plate into the housing behind. Once you do that on both sides, um, you do a quick test with a test meter, set it to bleep, and you should hold that on there and the screw, there'll be no noise. If you get a noise, that plate is still touching the chassis. Okay, you can see I've touched the chassis, the screw, nothing. Okay, same on that side. Bleep on the same thing, nothing on there at all. So that's all good. And that's it really and then do your left and right wires as normal and then i've got my orange on the motor and the gray on the other side which i've used blue for this one so that is the easiest e simple setup that is all it is but you must make sure you isolate the power between these two little screws otherwise you will blow your decoder as i've mentioned so to put that all back in the driver's falling out but i won't worry about that in a moment so that's it so let's uh put it up onto the layout and uh have a little test and see how it performs. So I'll just bring the train to a stop behind me and uh, just sort of, uh, otherwise it'd be too noisy. Um, so there we go, that is a, a budget loco. Um, they are there to be had. You've really just got to put your time in, have a look. And that is the proof of the pudding, um, a great loco. Um, so it was just my little experiment to see, you know, what was left and, you know, with all the big retailers putting all the prices up, there is lots and lots of bargains. And I think we do forget that we get compelled to buy new. I love new locos, but, um, is it realistic um, and is it setting a good example for the younger generation? 
Um, so this is really what um, I wanted to sort of show that, you know, you can get a, a, a cheap end loco and you can convert it and you can run it and get just as much joy out of it. And I've proved that myself. Um, so there we go. Um, a great day, um, a great show, and um, bring on the next one. We're, we're literally going from show to show at the moment. Um, I'm trying to get round. I think I've done probably about seven shows this year. Normally I do one a year. So um, I've excelled loads. Um, that's thanks to all you guys um, being part of this community that we're all sharing and doing. So thank you. So really good. Um, so that was the Great Electric Train Show. So the next one I'll be will be at the Wally Show in November and I'll be there on Saturday. So I shall see you guys Saturday at the Wally Show. That's the 24th of November. So that'd be really exciting. It's going to be a busy day. So anyway, I'm going to stop waffling like I normally do. I'm going to go in and have a cup of tea because I think all my family have gone to bed now. Um, so yes, it's quite late. Oops. Um, <laughs> so there we go. That wraps us up for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed looking at all the things we've been doing in this crazy month. Um, lots and lots going on, as I explained. So do keep posted and we shall see you all very soon. Don't forget, if you're in an exhibition and you see us, do come and say hi or leave us a comment, any questions or problems, do get in touch with me. Uh, you can get in touch with me through YouTube, through Twitter or through my webpage, uh, cheekytech.com. Any of them, they're all on, the, on this page, so you can all find me anyway. Take care and I shall catch you all very soon. Cheerio.